Tell me exactly what happened. Uh, my son-in-law called me and uh, texted me and said he come get the kids because he shot April, our daughter. Hey, sir, are you at that location? You no, know, we're, we're on the 405 headed there now from Long Beach. Well, we've got police and paramedics on the way. Sir, I'm going right. to stay on the phone with you, okay? Okay, Godspeed, please. I heard a bang, and I said, that, that sounded like a gunshot, not knowing really because I don't hear gunshots. And so I said, it sounded like a gunshot. Then I heard two more times, I heard three shots. I said, oh, I think that's gunfire. And I just took off and got in my house. When April left the house that morning, she was afraid, but she did not know she would be killed that evening. Watch this video to see what happened to make a man kill his wife in front of their children. Welcome to Backstreet Crime and News. Hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll be notified of new videos. April Jace, 40 years old, was married to Michael Jace. April was an American Masters track and field athlete who ran in sprinting competitions. A Masters athlete is an athlete over age 35. In the 4 x 100 meters relay, she was the 2011 world champion in the women's over 35 age group. Now that is a noteworthy accomplishment, being a world champion. She was even on a co-ed team. April Jace had worked as a financial aid counselor at Biola University, a private Christian school in La Miranda, California. She was the mother of three boys, an adult son from a previous relationship and two younger boys by her current husband, and they were ages five and eight. Michael Jace, 51 years old, was married to April Jace. She was his second wife. Michael had one son from a previous relationship and the two boys with April. Michael was an unemployed actor. His career started by appearing in an episode of Law & Order. Jace played a police officer, Julian Lowe, in the crime drama series, The Shield, for seven seasons and 88 episodes. He appeared in the show Southland and had small roles in such movies as Boogie Nights, Clear and Present Danger, The Great White Hype, Forrest Gump, plus many other shows. His career lasted 22 years. Michael and April married in June of 2003. To neighbors, April and Michael had the perfect relationship. There was no fighting or swearing. Michael seemed like the doting dad. April was very involved in her children's activities and was always pleasant. Michael had been unemployed for six years. He was drinking more. April told him she wanted a divorce. This upset Michael and he was obsessed with the belief that she was seeing someone else. His insecurities were showing. Michael frequently asked his friend Kenneth Brown to pray for his marriage, which was suffering because of Michael's extended unemployment and the couple's finances. Kenneth had worked with Michael on the Shield television series. Michael filed for bankruptcy in 2011 with $500,000 debt. He owed $411,000 on his current home. A few weeks before April's death, Kenneth learned during a church security team training that Michael had a gun in the house. This gun belonged to April's father. Five days before Michael killed April, he texted Kenneth that his marriage was a mess. The day before April's death, her son, Savoy, and her adult nephew, Christopher, went to the movies with April, and then they stayed overnight at the house. The next morning, the young men were awakened by Michael yelling, you don't have a godly reason for a divorce. The yelling continued for five minutes. Then they heard two crashes. Savoy grabbed a baseball bat and came out of the bedroom. Christopher followed him, and they saw a vase smashed on the floor and an ironing board knocked over. Michael and April were standing by the dining room table. Michael tried to get Savoy to give him the bat, but Savoy backed away toward the kitchen. April asked Christopher to get the bat, and Christopher grabbed the bat from Savoy. Michael kept repeating, I would never put my hands on your mom. I would never put my hands on your mom. A few minutes later, April left with Christopher and Savoy to drive her boys to school. April, being sensitive and caring about Michael's feelings, texted his friend Kenneth Brown to ask him to check on Michael. Kenneth texted Michael, when trouble comes, be full of joy. And Michael answered, it may be too late. April wants out and I'm tired of pleading. 
Kenneth invited him over to watch a game that night, but Michael declined. Michael also texted, she'll accept it or we'll move on. And if she isn't who I thought she was according to God, a lot changes. But she'll get what she wants, a way out. That evening, approximately 6 p.m., Kenneth renewed his invitation to Michael, who texted back, appreciate it, but shit is going to hell fast and I wouldn't be good company. Kenneth asked if Michael was staying at the house and Michael responded, leaving tonight. Michael also exchanged texts with his friend Evan, who invited Michael over around 4.45 p.m., but Michael never showed up. Michael sent multiple texts to April on the day she was killed, and she responded to many of them. For a total of 164 texts between 9.43 a.m. and 8.12 p.m., April texted Michael around 10.45 a.m., I don't want you throwing things and breaking things and screaming lies to the boys. I am afraid to come home. I am glad you are praying. Michael texted, I can vacate the premises for the night. Just give me a time and I'll leave. Adding that his biggest mistake was being involved with a woman who isn't submitted to God. He asked April, what time should I leave by? She responded she would bring the boys home after a game. That afternoon, Michael texted April. You've thrown me under the bus, April, and you are walking out on the boys. Michael accused of April of being involved with another man, which she denied. He texted, I'm just amazed at how comfortable a woman of God just walks out of a marriage. April responded, stop throwing the Bible at me. Around 4 p.m., she urged Michael to go to their son's baseball game. He's going to be so sad without you and probably won't even want to play. If it's easier, I won't go. Please don't not go because you are upset with me. Please. April tested Michael that one son hurt his arm and she was going to his school to pick him up. Michael texted he was walking and we both know we're not talking tonight. At 4.54 p.m., Michael responded, yes. When April asked him if he was on the road, April and Michael continued to text about their marriage. And around 6.45 p.m., she apologized that I'm not the perfect Christian woman you thought you married. He told April he was still walking, had been drinking, and was trying to find the key Evan hid for me. I'll text after I'm inside. At around 7.40 p.m., Michael texted that he had been praying and drinking since 10, maybe 11. At 7.45 p.m., Michael reminded April the boys needed to give the dog food and water before going to school. Michael texted April. Evan said hello, not that it really matters, and the tongue has the power of life and death. April texted Michael at 8.04, you should go to sleep, we'll talk tomorrow. At 8.12 p.m., April's last text described her son's performance at the baseball game, adding, looks like he had fun. Michael's cell phone was disconnected from the network around 8.06 p.m. until 8.23 p.m. Cellular tower evidence showed his phone remained near his and April's home, not near Evan's home. In court, the 10-year-old son testified at the trial that when April and his brother arrived home from the baseball game, Michael was standing in the dining room. April sat down in the dining room and the five-year-old climbed into her lap. After the boys went to their shared bedroom, the eight-year-old son saw Michael pull April by her arm into the hallway where she fell to the floor. And then my dad said, you like to run so much, why don't you try running to heaven? And then he shot her. He heard two gunshots. Michael shot April in her legs and back. One bullet entered her middle back and came out on the right side of her chest. April died of multiple gunshot wounds. Later, the prosecutor would say in court that Michael shot his wife once in the back after she arrived at the house on May 19. He then shot her two more times in her legs in front of their sons, who were ages 8 and 5 at the time. At 8.23 p.m., Michael texted April's stepfather, Carlos, Come get the boys. I just shot April. Carlos and April's mother, Kay, jumped into the car to drive to April's home. On the way to April's home, Carlos called 911 and told the operator about Michael's text and that April and Michael had been arguing. Michael called 911 at 8.31, reported a shooting before disconnecting the call. 
The 911 operator contacted the paramedics and called Michael's number. He answered and said, I shot my wife. He told the operator that the gun was on the table by the door and he was nowhere near it. Michael said he wanted paramedics because my intent was not to kill her. The 911 operator instructed him to step outside with his phone and the call ended with Michael directing the officers into the hallway. I talked to him about a month ago, actually. Um, and he was in there on the computer, say so he was trying to, uh, you know, trying to get back in the, he was, it was kind of slow, the business, the acting business was slow. He's trying to find another gig or whatever. And, uh, but he didn't seem, he didn't seem like anything was wrong at all. As far as the relationship with them, I've never seen them argue, yell. I've never seen him raise his voice at the kids or anything. From what I know, he was just, I um, mean, you know, a very, like perfect guy if you ask me and i'm pretty sure everyone probably said the same thing I vouch for that you know he was a very good dude this is shocking to everyone at the police station the next day michael who did not appear drunk and did not smell of alcohol said he had gotten upset about the text he and april exchanged during their son's baseball game he thought they had turned a corner financially but april had decided not to try to work it out he was just in so much pain that I just wanted her to feel some pain. April was a runner, so he shot her in the legs. Michael said he'd been drinking and was holding the gun when April came home with the boys. The gun had belonged to April's father and was already loaded. Michael and April sat down at the table, sent the kids to their rooms, and then he said April lunged at him. He pushed April away, and then he said, as I was pushing, I, I shot the first shot, not knowing where it hit April. April fell and he fired into her legs. He said all I had intended to do was shoot her in the leg. He may have shot the gun two or three times. Before he shot her, he said he had never laid a finger on April. We were happy except for the money, Michael said. I didn't have the courage to, to kill myself. I didn't mean to kill her. Michael told the police the reason he had the gun in the first place was that he was thinking about using it on himself. When Michael was arrested, he was placed on $2 million bail. A few days later, after he killed April, Michael called her brother Carlo from jail. Michael told Carlo it was an accident and that he was probably a little drunk. The gun had been for himself, not April. Michael wasn't trying to kill April. He said, I was in so much pain because I knew she was going to leave me that I wanted her to be in pain like I was in pain. I wanted her to lose something, which was track. Carla explained to the jury that April was an outstanding runner on a track team. In court, it was revealed that this was not the first time Michael had been violent. According to child custody records, a friend of Michael's ex-wife claimed that she witnessed four separate incidents where he became violent towards his first wife. She further testified that Michael Jakes choked and hit his first wife and slammed her against the wall while their infant son screamed in the crib next to her. On the morning of the day he killed April, Michael argued with April about the divorce. After April left to take the boys to school and to go to work, Michael told April he would leave the house before she returned home. He texted April he was walking to Evan's house and looking for the key. And he even relayed a message from Evan. But in reality, he never left the couple's home as he told April he would. Instead, when April came home that night with her sons, Michael was waiting for them, holding the gun. With the boys watching from their bedroom, he shot and killed April, telling her, if you like running, then run to heaven. He was taunting her. Michael told detectives he fired the first shot and then after April failed, he intentionally shot her in the legs. So as a talented runner, she would feel some of his pain. This was compelling evidence that Michael acted with malice required for second degree murder. The jury convicted Michael of second degree murder with intentional and personal discharge of a firearm causing death. The trial court sentenced Michael to 15 years to life for second degree murder and a consecutive 25 year sentence for the firearm enhancement for a total of 40 years to life. I'm still trying to comprehend myself. I just like to see the sadness on his face that he realized it because it seems like every now and then there's moments of sadness and moments of not. And those moments of not really get me questioning, you know, like, how, how can you go that far? How can you say those words? How can you do that? 
Do you think there's been justice here? Almost. She was really happy. All the time. As much as she could be. And she she'd do her best to be happy. And that's what I feel like she's doing now if, if there is an afterlife. Women. April was afraid to go home that day because of the aggression that Michael had shown earlier that day. And she actually thought he was gone. She thought they had an agreement that he wouldn't be there when she got home. But it turns out Michael was lying. In fact, lying and laying in wait. Just information, hopefully, to help other women. When you leave, you leave. You can't tell people you're going to divorce them and stay in the house with them or sleep in the same bed with them, but tell them we're going to get a divorce. That happens too often. It sends mixed messages. Plus, it makes them angry to see you living your life, having fun, making plans without them. Remember, when a woman leaves, or tries to leave is when the man is most dangerous. That's just common in domestic abuse. So once you make up your mind you're gonna leave, you have to have a plan and you need to leave. Sometimes it's just better to leave and not wait on the man to leave, you leave. Get your children and leave. Have your backup plan and leave. You need to put some distance so that the man can actually cool off. And that may take months for that to happen. But if that is what needs to happen, that is what needs to happen. But again, ladies, be careful. This is just a good example of a man so dissatisfied with his own life that he wants you to hurt because he's hurting. So just think about that. My sincere condolences go out to April's family, friends, and loved ones. She was a phenomenal woman. Lean on the good memories you have to remind you of the joy she brought into your life. Jealousy, envy, insecurity. Michael was no longer the man he used to be. Why he did not go out and get another job, change his career, we don't know. Thank you for supporting the Backstreet Crime and News channel by watching these videos. If you like this video, hit the like button, leave us a comment below, share this video with your friends, and please subscribe to this channel. I'll see you in the next video.